السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will talk about two of the female companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are Durra bintu Abi Lahab radiyallahu anha and Al-Khansa radiyallahu anha. So, Durra bintu Abi Lahab radiyallahu anha was from the relatives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, she's his cousin. She accepted Islam and she believed in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam despite her parents' vicious enmity for Islam. So she embraced Islam without fear. She didn't care about her parents. She didn't care about her family. So she joined the sacred ranks of the companions. And she was a very strong believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. So uh, her father, Abu Lahab, and her mother, Um Jamil, those were amongst the worst enemies of Islam. And they were um, amongst the worst enemies of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the extent of Abu Lahab's enmity towards Islam was um, well, for example, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called people uh, publicly towards the truth, so Abu Lahab openly attempted to denounce him and tried to distance people from him. What about his wife? Umm Jamil would cover the path uh, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with, uh, with thorns in order to harm him. So for those parents, the daughter was a complete different person. A Sayyid, Sayyida Durra radiyallahu anha was an amazing companion so in these difficult circumstances durra radiyallahu anha discarding uh, discarding the religion of her parents um, abandoning their false practices embracing islam and standing in support of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these, these points were evident, were proofs of her recognition of the truth and of her courage. Who is this amazing companion? I initially, uh, Durra radiallahu anha, was married to a non-believer whose name was uh, Haris ibn Nawfal. And together, they had three children, Aqba, Walid, and Abu Muslim. Her husband, Haris, was a non-believer. He participated in Badr, and he was killed in that battle. Later, 
Durra radiyallahu anha married the famous handsome companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was so handsome of the companions. His name was Dihya al-Kalbi radiyallahu anh. And uh, if you remember, Jibreel alayhi salam would often appear in his form when visiting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Durra was uh, a companion who, uh, who migrated from Mecca to Medina to escape the uh, oppression of the family and of the society. So when Dura uh, anha arrived in Medina, Um, she stayed at the home of one of the companions whose name was Rata. And uh, some woman from Zurayq tribe said to her, so you are the daughter of Abu Lahab, regarding whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tabbat yadda Abi Lahabim wa tab. So uh, may both the hands of Abu Lahab be destroyed and he has been destroyed. So how will you attain any reward for migrating? So Durra radiallahu anha was saddened by these words and she shared this experience with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he do? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Muhammad reassured her and he told her uh, to sit. He asked her to sit with them. And after leading the prayer, he ascended the pulpit and he made a declaration. So what did he say? He said, ما بال أقوام يؤذونني في ذوي نسبي ألا ومن آذى نسبي وذوي رحمي فقد آذاني ومن آذاني فقد آذى الله So سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said Oh people Why am I being troubled about the affairs of my family? By Allah, he sweared, by Allah, my intercession will reach my relatives. So whoever, whoever uh, hurts me with my people, with my relatives, then he hurt me, myself, he hurt me. And whoever hurt me, it has hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defended the oppressed. He stood firm and he told people to be careful. He warned them. So, Durra radiyallahu anha uh, narrated hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she narrated two hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of them was uh, when when the Prophet وسلم, was on the pulpit, someone asked him, oh, oh, Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, who is the best of people? And Sayyidina Muhammad 
Alayhi wa sallam answered, he explained, the best of people is the one who is most mindful of Allah, who commands right, forbids evil, and maintains family ties the most. So Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us the example or the characteristics of the person who is the best of people. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing, doing the right and command, commanding doing the right, commanding people to do right. Stays away from evil and asks people to stay away from evil. And he has good ties with, with, with the family. So this is the first hadith that was narrated by Durra alayhi salam. Radiallahu anha. And the, the second hadith that she narrated about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a living person cannot be harmed in retaliation for the actions of the deceased. So these are the two hadith that Durra radiallahu anha narrated for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, uh, she was, Durra radiallahu anha, was an immensely pious. She feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She wanted the, the she wanted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to be pleased with her. She did her best for that. And she was a generous person. And uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, described how generous she was. And he talked about how generous she was in feeding people. So it doesn't matter who the parents are. It doesn't matter if they are believers or not. It doesn't matter where, where you are raised. But what matters is the faith that's inside the heart. The to, uh, being faithful to the iman, to the to the to the religion that we have in, in our heart. And to apply the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was the daughter of the most uh, people who were, who were against Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given her uh, an honor uh, when she uh, when she migrated and when she uh, refused the religion of her fathers of her uh, uh, forefathers and the best of that uh, honor was that Jibril alayhi salam would come to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the form of her husband Dihya al-Kalbi So this was Durra radiallahu anha. So uh, from this amazing female companion, we get the strength in our uh, relation with, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She did not care who, who her father and mother were. She did not care about anything, but she wanted to support Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She wanted to prove how good Muslim she is. So from this character, we have to look at ourselves. We have to look what are we doing for our religion? How are we faithful to our religion? What are we doing? 
are we good models for people around us? Will people, when looking at us, say, we want to follow this religion? We like the, the radiance on the faces of this person? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a person, he throws uh, the light in, in his heart. He guides him so he would know what, what path to follow. So being guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that the person is on the right path. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the, the right path to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to whatever pleases him, to, to accept our deeds and to make them faithful, to make them just pure for, for his sake. Moving on to our second companion, female companion. Her name is Al Khansa. And her title is a distinguished poet and the mother of the heroes. So who is Al Khansa? Her name is Tumadur, Tumadur bin to Amr ibn al Harith ibn Sharid. So it was the year eight of Hijrah. Uh, a lady was amongst the delegation of her uh, tribe. She, she they, they, they came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she was a noble uh, a, a lady of a noble origin. She was extremely, extremely beautiful. She was well mannered. She was very eloquent. So she was with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the delegation, and she was and she embraced Islam. And she started saying some of her poetry. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, Hey, ya khunas. So who is this lady? Who was she before being a Muslim? She was a poet before Islam. And she was very famous for the sort of poetry that she re was reciting about the death of her brothers. Her brothers, Sakhar and Muawiyah, passed away. And she said poetry, very sort of poetry, about them. So she said about Sakhar, عَيْنَيَّ جُودَا وَلَا تَجْمَدَا ألا تبكيان لصخر الندى؟ ألا تبكيان الجريئة الجميلة؟ ألا تبكيان الفتى السيدة؟ So she said, Oh my eyes, shed tears generously. Will you not weep for Sakhar, the generous? Will you not shed tears for the uh, uh, Odysseus? Tall? Handsome young man who, poss who possessed the qualities of leadership and who led his people. Her poems were uh, so eloquent. So, what type of a change that happened to Hansa? when she became a Muslim. And what type of a change does Islam do on the life of the companions? 
So the life of Al Khansa was the best example to know how she moved, how she changed from being one person to another person before Islam and after Islam. So, as I mentioned, the change started when she came to Medina with the delegation of her uh, tribe, Bani Sulaim. She came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She embraced Islam and she pledged her alliance to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She became a good Muslim. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when she would be uh, attending a gathering, he would ask her to say a few uh, lines of her poetry. She would listen to the Holy Quran from him. And those ayahs, those, this Quran that she would listen to, these uh, halaqas uh, that she used to be in, these gatherings that she used to be in with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were the keys of khair that made her close the pre-Islamic uh, doors and opening the doors of faith, the doors of nur. So she changed from one person to another. And she started to raise her children as per the uh, uh, rules of the new religion. She would encourage them to be courageous. She would encourage them to be, to follow the uh, jihad. She will encourage them to, 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 uh, to be uh, ready to sacrifice themselves for the sake of Islam, for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in, the ta in, in the battlefields. So she was a model to all moms. So she lived during the time of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, she learned a lot from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And after his death, she lived in the time, in the uh, time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar. And she witnessed the armies of the Muslims going all over the place just to uh, spread the religion of Islam. So this army would uh, talk uh, to people before starting the battles. The leader of the army would, would uh, it, uh, encourage the enemies to become Muslims. If they would uh, accept, they won't fight them. So the banners of uh, Islam spread everywhere. Moving people from darkness to light. And seeing that, she was remembering how, what it means to be a Muslim and what it means to be a non-Muslim. She used to remember her life before Islam and now her life after Islam. So she would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has guided her to become a Muslim and that he has honored her to become a Muslim. So they are now people who call for Islam. Now, as we said, she lived in, at the time of Sayyidina Umar. Anh. And 
And at that time, the armies of Islam used to go everywhere. So one of the battles that happened at the time of Umar al-Farooq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, was uh, uh, one of the armies headed to uh, conquer Iraq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Al-Khansa and her four children to be with this army going to Qadisiyah. So they all went with the army to uh, participate in this uh, very important uh, battle, Al Qadisiyah. So, what did uh, Al Khansa do? Al Khansa, before uh, the battle, she got her four children and she was talking to them encouraging them to to fight courageously fiercely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she 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 told them she reminded them that they die that then their death will be the key for them to enter paradise. She reminded them that being victorious and having victory is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she said a lot of things for them. She, she encouraged them a lot. And of what she said was ya bani ya innakum aslamtum ta'i'in wa hajartum mukhtarin my sons you embraced islam and you migrated willingly wa innakum la banu rajulin wahid kama annakum banu mura'atin wahida you are all sons of one man, as you are sons of one woman. وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنَ الثَّوَابِ الْجَزِيلِ فِي حَرْبِ الْكَافِرِينَ You know the great, uh, you know the abundant reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set has uh, uh, assigned for the Muslims who fight against the non-believers. So her words, now she's, she's trying to get them, uh, uh, to get them healed for, to fight for the sake of Allah. She, she, she continued and she said, I want you to know that the everlasting abode is better than this vanishing one. And I want to stop here. I want to stop here to say a few words about this vanishing life that we are living in and about the everlasting one. Now we see people competing for this dunya. This one has a house, I want to buy a better house. This one has so much gold, I want to get a, a lot a lot more than what, what they have. This one has this type of car. I want to get a better type of car. So this competition is about dunya. But will anyone who, who, who die, who, who, who is dying, get any of these things, dunya things with him to the grave? No. So this competition 
is getting a person to be a loser. But there is a, a, a better competition in this dunya. What is this dunya? How can, how can we benefit of this dunya? How can we compete in this dunya? If we want to know that, we have to go back to the Sahaba, to the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They used to compete. But how? When they would meet, one would ask the other, how many rak'ahs did you pray at night? How much Quran did you read tonight? How, how, how much did you pay for the sake of Allah? And they would answer each other, not for the sake of showing off. No, Allah. They would answer each other just for the sake of competition. For and and this competition is pure for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, while competing in this dunya, they are actually competing for the akhirah, not for the dunya. Because the result of these actions will be, the reward will be achieved in the day after and not now. So the more you read of the Quran this, in this dunya, the more reward you will have in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the, to, to the person, read and elevate. With each ayah that you recite on the day of judgment, you will be elevated one level in Jannah. So this is the real competition in this dunya. So we are working in this dunya, but our aim is to be of the winners of the everlasting life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says she continues and she now she is continuing her speech to her children. So she's she's uh, um, reciting surah, uh, ayah 200 of Surah Ali Imran when she said, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqu allaha la'allakum tuflihun. O oh, you who believe, endure, and be more patient. Be more patient than your enemy. Be more patient than what you have been before. Be more patient to everything that to everything that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put you in. And this is a lesson for us. So we have to accept. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in. We have to follow these orders so that we would understand what, what's going on after. So, اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله. So, be patient and Guard, uh, uh, guard your territory against the enemy and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may be successful. An amazing speech from a mom encouraging her children, her sons, to fight fiercely on the battlefield. So she says, فَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتُمْ غَدًا إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ سَالِمِينَ فَاغْدُوا إِلَىٰ قِتَالِ عَدُوِّكُمْ مُسْتَبْصِرِينَ وَبِاللَّهِ عَلَىٰ أَعْدَائِهِ مُسْتَنْصِرِينَ When you wake up tomorrow morning, Allah willing, sound and healthy, this is how she's praying for them, go! Go and fight, fight against your enemy with conviction and seek Allah's help over his enemies. 
فإذا رأيتم الحرب شمرت عن ساقها وضرمت لذا مساقها فتيمموا وطيسها When you see that war has become tense so what you should do engage yourselves in the in the fight تظفروا بالغنم تظفروا بالغنم والكرامه في دار الخلد والمقام so that you may attain treasures and honor in the abode of eternity so she she's encouraging them for the everlasting life not for this dunya what happened her sons left having accepted her admonition and they were determined to implement her words so when when the morning came they set out early towards the battlefield and they all fought gallantly and courageously of course what how how do you think they would fight after these encouraging words so they fought until they were murdered one after the other so they all died they were all murdered for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course what happens the news spreads So the news of their martyrdom was swiftly approaching Al Khansa. What was her reaction? What? What was it? What? 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 What was she going to say? Is she going to uh, to say? lines of poetry sorrow poetry about the death of her sons how and to um praise them well, what what would she say so the words that we are going to hear from al khansa when she heard this great news uh she remembered nothing but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she remembered allah's promise and she said alhamdulillah alhamdulillah alladhi sharrafani biqatlihim wa arju min rabbi أن يجمعني بهم في مستقر رحمته. So all praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So all praise is due to Allah who honored me with their martyrdom. She's thanking Allah سبحانه وتعالى and she's considering their death as an honor because they died for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were all martyrs. And I hope that my Lord will make me join them in the abode of his mercy. أرجو أن يجمعني ربي بهم في مستقر رحمته. So... They all passed away. She did not say any words that were not accepted by Allah. No, on the contrary. She thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so what happened? Her children opened the door of death before their mom. She knew that everyone is going to pass through this door. So when people die, when our kinship die, when our fathers, mothers, grandparents, everyone, children, relatives, 
So when, when anyone passes away, we know that they opened the door and they went in before us. But we are all going through that door. And this is actually what makes our grief less and less. Because we know that one day we are passing through this door to meet our loved ones. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all meet with them and then with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our goal in this life. That when we pass away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is satisfied, is happy with us. When he is, then we know where we will be. So we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for husnul khatima, the best of endings, that he would be pleased with us at that time. So Amr ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu an, after the death of the four children of al-Khansa, he used to give her um, uh, the amount, the entitlement of her four murdered ones annually, which was about 200 dirhams. And that happened year after year until he died or until she died. So if we stop here for a second, and if I would like here to address myself and all the mothers of today, all the Muslim women, all those who are raising children. In Al Khansa, there is an example of a role model for all of us. If we all follow her footsteps in raising our children, we will have pious, good, fearing, and courageous young men and women. And when this happens, what will happen? Then we will have a strong ummah. So as mothers, we should not love our children only for this dunya. We should not only care about providing them with all they need. No, we should love them for their akhirah. We should always advise them. We should always talk to them. We should always guide them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should always make them love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we should always get them to be connected with the Quran we should always uh, uh, raise them for, uh, to have good manners that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased with we should raise them to be proud of being Muslims this is al Khansa. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on al khansa May Allah be pleased with this believing and patient female companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may he ran, raise, raise her ranks just as she raised such pious, good, fearing children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Unite us all together with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And until we meet next week, inshallah, I send your salam and my salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.